Hello to you all. My name is <clears throat> Mark Mangini, and I'm a sound designer. Um, you may be wondering what exactly is a sound designer. Um, my job is to be responsible for everything that you hear in a movie. Um, and it may come as a surprise to you that when I receive a movie, there is virtually no sound. Um, we know, and you know, that when you see a movie being made, there's the sound person there and they're holding a boom pole or something like that and there's a microphone capturing the words that are spoken by the actors, but that microphone captures little else and that leaves an entire realm of the, the sound universe to be reproduced um, in um, post-production uh, and that's what I do. My job is to create that sonic universe that the words live within. Um, it, you can imagine that in science fiction, especially, and in horror, um, all those sounds you've never heard before don't really exist, right? Uh, I mean, you know that um, lightsabers don't really exist, and we know that... Um, you know, Godzillas don't really exist and things of that nature. So, of course, those sounds have to be created, designed, fabricated, edited, mixed, etc. So, um, much like, I, I like to think of my responsibility to the movie uh, is to the finished soundtrack as the writer's responsibility is to the actor. Um, if the actor shows up to the set and there's uh, the, the cameraman is there and the costumer and the director. Everybody's ready to make a movie. But if you don't have the words to speak, you don't have a scene. That, that in, in essence, uh, is true of what I do. Um, when the soundtrack arrives, there is virtually no sound there. There is no content. And it is my responsibility to think up, imagine, invent that content and provide it to the um, studio to be mixed and managed and blended into a finished, pleasing soundtrack that you hear when you go to the theater or when you enjoy your media at home. So um, the, the question specifically put to me was, how do you plan a project uh, when you first receive it? Um, very simply, the first goal of a sound designer is to tell the story with sound. Um, th this is, 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 is a um, universal theme throughout all aspects of filmmaking. Um, wh when you think about it, everyone involved in making a film has a job to do, and that is first to tell the story with the tools that they've been given. So you know that when you watch cinema, the, there is um, the visual component, and Sometimes you're in a close-up, and sometimes you're in a medium shot, and sometimes you're in a wide shot. Why does the cinematographer make those choices? What do those choices tell you about the story and the character? Those are very deliberate choices. They're not accidental. So, too, I, I think even more um, uh, informing is what the work the costumer does. Um, very rarely is the costume designated in the script. It is really left to the costume designer to imagine who is this character and how does what he or she wears say something about who they are, what their position in life is, what their station in history is. So much of what you see on a character um, informs you non-verbally about the story. So too with sound design, I can inform a scene with sound and tell you something about the universe these characters inhabit with sound without actually having to tell words, uh, speak words. So uh, in a sense, um, the kind of work that cinematographers and costumers and sound designers are doing is very, very efficient screenwriting because we're not encumbered by having to use words to explain something. We can present a sound and the sound automatically 
conveys exactly the meaning that's necessary to give you information without having to say, um, Sally is scared today, or Sally isn't um, uh, affluent. So l let me give you a very simple example. Um, uh, a character walks into the room to meet someone that they've never met before. Now, um, we can approach that in a way that says something about who that character is. Let's say when they walk in the room, you hear the subtle creak of their shoes. Well, you might dismiss that as that's just an artifact of you know, the, 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 the sound that was captured on the set. But in fact, that was very likely a sound that was manufactured in post-production to imply that this character perhaps is not of sufficient um, economic means to own new shoes. Wouldn't that be what a creaky pair of leather shoes might imply? Now, you don't necessarily think this when you watch a movie, but you feel it and you, you internalize it and you begin to make assumptions about a character based on the kinds of things that you hear. So imagine again that very, very simple scene of a person walking into the room and maybe you're in a close-up like this and you hear, I gotta get a prop, <laughs> you hear this. I hope you can hear that, but it's the sound of jingling keys. Now, if you're in a sh close up, you don't know that that character does or does not have keys in their pocket and perhaps the costumer didn't provide it or the prop person. But that sound immediately tells you, I think that character is nervous because that's what nervous people do. They fidget. And so by simply adding a sound that was neither mentioned in the script or provided a utility for by the prop person, I can imply something about that character with a simple addition of a sound and help further the story. And of course, this is something that sound designers do ad nauseum throughout the two hours of a motion picture. So for example, on an average kind of, maybe not even a big action film, uh, you know, what we call a walkie-talkie, um, I might add up to 2,500 individual sounds sounds that were not captured when the film was shot and the original sync audio was captured by that boom person. That's a lot of responsibility to first um, understand what is needed and then imagine or go about the physical task of either recording it or um, manufacturing it if it doesn't exist in reality, and then editing it to make sure it's in sync with the image, and then mixing it so that it sounds pleasing and believable when the audience hears it in the finished motion picture. So now I can finish and sum this up by saying, when I am given a project, my process is very simple. I first must understand the story, so I need to read the script. That process allows me to then go through um, a, a, something akin to what an actor does, which is understand characters' motivations and what the filmmaker and the story is trying to say um, without actually using words to say those same things. Once I have an understanding of what the script is trying to say, I break it down into its component parts. What sounds do I have in my sound library? Uh, that can help convey those moments. Okay, that's great. I, I, I know I have those, but maybe there's sounds in this project that I don't have or don't exist. So what sounds do I then need to go and record because I don't have them? Uh, let's say this project takes place on an aircraft carrier. Well, um, I don't have sounds of an aircraft carrier, but the film takes place on it. And when it was shot, the goal was to remember, capture just what the words are that the actors are saying, but not all the associated sounds with an aircraft carrier, carrier, like the sounds of the engine and the sounds of the jets and the sounds of the crewmen shouting and screaming. It, it, it goes on and on. So I then need to record those sounds so that I have them available to me to lay in underneath the recordings of the dialogue. If it's a science fiction project such as Blade Runner or Mad Max or you know something I didn't do like a Star Wars, 
uh, or a Star Trek, um, I have to now imagine and create sounds that don't exist that I can't go out and actually record. What does a photon torpedo sound like? Um, what does a spinner sound like, the, the craft that um, Deckard and, and Kay fly in the Blade Runner series of films? These are just a small component of the hundreds of sounds that I have to imagine what they sound like and then find a way to create from whole cloth. So, for example, the spinner in the Blade Runner movies um, was described to me by Denis Villeneuve as um, a, 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 a flying ship of unknown um, propulsion system. Well, what does that mean? Does it have an engine? Does it have a rocket? Does it have magnets? All of these are possibilities to lead me towards um, the source of a sound that I might begin to use to create the sounds for that object. As it happens, we landed on the sound of um, uh, uh, these indigenous um, instruments called, um, oh, I'm, I'm spacing on it, they're made from cat or nine tails, and you spin them about you he your head and you get this um, interesting kind of um, modulating buzzing sound that goes vroom, 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 vroom. And that to me sounded like the beginnings of an engine. So we recorded those in a studio and then manipulated them to move in the same ways and this with using the same ballistics as the visual effects of the spinner itself in the movie. So that's that, that in a nutshell is is how we go about then creating sounds of things that don't exist. So step one, understand the story, read the script. Step two, identify the sounds that are needed however you're going to um, um, manage um, recreating them, uh, record or design. Step three is then edit. You've got all these components that you've captured in what we called a wild uh, recording, meaning it was not done synchronous to film like production was. We now have to take these sounds and edit them in a computer uh, so that they fit the exact images as they've been given to us. It takes many weeks and months to do all that fitting. Well, now you've got a, um, uh, a computer program. We use something called Pro Tools, available to anyone, um, and we edit within that uh, software program. But what we now have is several hundred tracks of individual components that need to be blended together to achieve the final result. We then go to a recording studio and we do just that. We re-record sounds we've already recorded or designed and we blend them into the finished single soundtrack that you hear when you enjoy a movie. Um, keep in mind that what sounds like one track could be made up of maybe thousands of individual tracks that are all blended carefully together to create the finished sound that you hear. And that includes the three major food groups that we divide sound and cinema into, which is dialogue, the words that people speak, the music, what the composer writes and records, and the sound effects, all the sounds that make up the universe, the reality of what you experience in a movie. Those are the four fundamental steps of taking on a project and seeing it through to completion. In the midst of all that is the collaboration that happens as, as happens in any of the cinema crafts with the director and the producer and the actors, in fact. Uh, none of this happens in a vacuum. At every step of that process, I am checking with the director to make sure I understand his or her vision of the project so that the sounds I'm recording and designing and editing match what they want to achieve. So at several moments in the process, they are coming to my studio and I'm playing them something and saying, how does this sound? Does this serve the story? Is it telling the story? Is it working against the story? And in that process, we co-develop the soundtrack of the uh, motion picture. Um, that collaboration is one of the most valuable and I think enjoyable parts of the process because I love the give and take that happens between creative people. I love the ability to say to another creative person, here's my idea, what do you think? 
And I love the variety of responses that I can get, which can include, love that idea, let's do that, or don't let, like that idea because this is where I want the story to go. Let's, let's move more in that direction and all the other iterations that can happen in between. I, I think this is part of what makes any great motion picture successful is that successful collaboration with the other creatives uh, who are making the movie with you. And I would argue that the great directors in the world have established a, a, a fine sense of how to collaborate and bring out the best in everyone that they work with. I can tell you that the directors I've worked with that include George Lucas and Steven Spielberg and Denis Villeneuve and George Miller and, and, and Joe Dante and, and many others have a, a unique um, uh, and, and beautiful sense of appreciation for the art that the people that they work with bring to the projects. And um, that makes movie making a lot of fun. I hope this has been helpful for you. Good luck making movies and remember always speak your voice. It's one of the most essential parts of making beautiful cinema is you bringing you to every project that you work on.